Philadelphia. The Red Sox are a win away from a four game sweep of the Phillies. Chris Sale has the task of finishing off the series right before the ball club moves out of Houston. Beautiful night for a ball game tonight. Welcome to Philly, everybody. I'm Dave O'Brien alongside my partner, Red Sox Hall of Famer Jerry Remy. Garen Austin joining us in just a couple of moments. And anytime Chris Sale is on the mound, Jerry, the Red Sox feel very, very confident. That's also true when Mookie Betts is in the lineup on a night like last night where he just took over the game. You know, it's funny. You and I were talking last night. We mentioned how Mookie's always got a smile on his face. Well, if we were that good, we'd be smiling all the time, too, because this kid is unbelievable. What a night he had here last night, four hits, including two home runs in the fourth inning picks up home run number 10 on the season going to deep left field in the ninth inning hits another home run number 11 on the seal but that wasn't enough for him had two more hits on top of that and then great defense again that ball slicing away from him in the opposite field he knows he has to go into a dive to make a play I mean this kid is just special look what he's done in his last 11 games a 362 batting average look at the OPS over a thousand that's remarkable for a leadoff hitter so he is right now playing as good a baseball as you can possibly play we have the fortunate uh, ability to watch him play every night and that's exciting to watch superstars play every single night and he is a superstar yeah, it's still like right at the beginning of his career it yes. really is an exciting time to be watching Mookie Betts and Chris Sale as well tonight on the hill looking to make it eight consecutive wins and looking to swat aside the Philadelphia Phillies here in the finale still leading the major leagues in strikeouts sale against the Phillies game number four coming up from Citizens Bank Park. Toyota's website for deals via Toyota.com. Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin'. Your New England Audi dealers in the all new 2018 Audi Q5. Plain Ridge Park Casino, 45 minutes from Boston. Lexus and the Lexus Strikes Out Hunger program. And by Southwest, yes to low fares with nothing to hide, that's transparency. Back in Philadelphia, Chris Sale on the mound tonight. We bring in Garen Austin. Garen, last night it was Brian Johnson. He had to depart in the third inning to injury. What's the latest on Brian? Well, OB, after the game last night, Brian Johnson said that he started feeling tightness in his shoulder while he was warming up in the bullpen. Of course, Johnson has been placed on the 10 day DL with left shoulder impingement, and he's on his way back to Boston to be examined by Dr. Asnes. Farrell said we won't know any more until they get the results of that exam, but Johnson said that he's pretty confident that this is not going to be a long term concern. Until then, Hector Velasquez will take his spot in the rotation. OB. And he got the win last night, his first major league win. But back to last night, and when that happened, and I talked to Brian in the clubhouse tonight, and he said on that pitch, his arm was kind of on fire, that shoulder, and he knew he didn't have anything behind that pitch. You can see the look on his face. Right now, a shoulder impingement. The hope it's nothing more serious than that, and he can dodge one 
and at some point be back in that rotation. So the Red Sox making a move that is young Austin Maddox who has been promoted to the big league club for the first time and he gets to carry the gum and the candy and everything in that backpack out to the bullpen. So he's got a new gig along with pitching at the big league level for the first time Red Sox and the Phillies about to get game four of this series underway the Red Sox gained ground inside the division last night because the Yankees lost again and right now the Red Sox with sale on the bump tonight are just two games behind the Yankees who stay on the West Coast and they're in Oakland this evening to get a four game series underway. Give you a look at the American League East now the Orioles continue to spiral even though they had won yesterday they lost again today five to two to the White Sox so they're back to a game below 500 and seven games off the pace right now Tampa Bay is surprised to be playing two games over 500 near the Red Sox at 37 and 28 trying to get to 10 games over 500 for the first time in 2017. Time for our twisted but true fact now the Phillies have lost eight consecutive games coming into play tonight against interleague opponents matching a franchise worst stretch against the American League. They also dropped eight in a row in the interleague in 2014. Twisted tea tastes like real ice tea be a little twisted. A yeah, beautiful night here in Philadelphia Red Sox about to fly to Houston as soon as this one is over for the weekend series. And here's a look at the Red Sox lineup brought to you by Toyota's website for deals by Toyota.com. The red hot Mookie Betts will lead things off then Dustin Pedroia 338 lifetime against the National League. Xander Bogart said short Mitch Moreland back in there at first base after missing last night. Andrew Benintendi followed by Jackie Bradley Pablo Sandoval Sandy Leon doing the catching and Chris Sale pitching and he'll do some hitting tonight batting out of the nine spot and facing the right hander Nick Pavetta he is one and three of five fifty two ERA twenty four years old from British Columbia and the defense tonight for the Phillies they are fourth in the National League with thirty five errors on the season Michael Franco will be at third base Freddie Galvis the shortstop Howie Kendrick at second and Tommy Joseph the first baseman left to right Daniel Nava Odubu Herrera and Aaron Altair Andrew Knapp doing the catching for Pavetta. Your ups tonight are brought to you by Toyota's website for deals by Toyota.com. Jim Wolf has the plate. Lance Barrett at first base to Shearwater is second. Jim Reynolds makes the calls at third. Where available this telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your TV remote SAP presented by Toyota. Visit Compra2Toyota.com to see Toyota deals not seen on TV. When it's no chase amigos. Weather's been great throughout the short stay here in Philadelphia right now 77 degrees a lot of sunshine as well and lower humidity than yesterday certainly did not seem to affect the Red Sox they got out of the gate very quickly despite being a little bit sleepy getting in about four o'clock in the morning and immediately took a five nothing lead and played some great defense too. Yeah this is absolutely perfect baseball weather tonight. That a one and three acquired from the Washington Nationals in the Jonathan Papelbon trade in July of 2015. And the righty's first one. A strike and we're underway. Last year spent time at Reading. It was also in the Lehigh Valley Triple A. Started this year playing uh, in the minor leagues against Pawtucket a couple of starts. And now of course in the big leagues is Pavetta. Now Mookie had himself a night last night didn't he four for five a double two homers and three runs batted in. Last time up had a chance to hit for the cycle he said the heck with that and hit his second home run. What do you think in this ballpark how many would he hit. Uh, I, it's hard to tell but you know it's just tailor made for him because it has that the short left field fence out there and. He hits a lot of line drive home runs. Bounding ball to third, and Franco will pick that. One man gone. And Dustin Pedroia will be next. Pavetta's got a good fastball. You know, he'll get it up there 96, sometimes 97 miles an hour. Breaking ball, change up. But his best pitch is his fastball. 
You know, he's been averaging about 94 miles an hour in six starts. So he does throw hard. He's not always exactly sure where it's going because he will walk people. But a strike on Pedroia now hitting over 300, 302 with a pair of home runs. Dustin last night was two for five, and the Sox win, and he's hit safely in five straight. As that drop down slider, a little bit different arm angle from Pavetta going down to the side and uh, throw, dropping the slider on uh, Pedroia outside part of the plate. There's some giddy up on that fastball at 97. Yep. Xander Bogarts on deck. Red Sox going for four straight wins and a sweep of the series against the National League opponent. After winning the first two at Fenway and then last night. Two hopper, Galvis on the charge, and two down. Galvis actually has played pretty good shortstop, but you know, defensively for the Phillies this season, he's only made four errors at that position. And makes a nice backhanded play that time and has uh, Pedroia at first base by plenty. Xander 325, two homers, 26 RBIs. Mitch Moreland will hit behind him, giving a chance in this inning. He's back in the lineup tonight. After missing last night, game before he had been hit on the foot by a pitch, shaking off that injury, getting back in there tonight. Bogart's two for five yesterday with a double. He drove in three runs. Yeah, right now that fastball consistently at 97 miles an hour for Pavetta. He's throwing about three or four of them here in the first inning at 97. Two strike pitch. The two strikes that means Andrew Bogarts has Pavetta exactly where he wants him. <laughs> As most of the Red Sox right they don't strike out. We were talking about that last night. They're not afraid to hit with two strikes. That ball really jammed the Bogots, but he was able to foul it off. For Xander, eight of his last ten hits have come with two strikes. And not this time. Down he goes in a pretty nasty slider. And the Red Sox go one, two, three, with Chris Sale about to take to the hill.
and Red Sox and the Phillies. Here's the Philly lineup brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. Herrera leads it off. Then it's Kendrick, Altair, and Joseph. Franco at third base. Daniel Nava in left. Galvis the shortstop with Knapp doing the catching and Pavetta the pitcher. Against the Red Sox starter presented by New England Audi dealers. Chris Sale has won seven in a row. Eight and two coming in. A 2-9-70 RA still leading the major leagues in strikeouts. Oduble Herrera, the center fielder with speed. Tonight, Irish Heritage Night, a celebration of Irish heritage here in Philadelphia. And they had several Irish bands on the field, and Oduble was right in the middle of them. He was cutting a rug, really enjoying himself. Yeah, it was a great show put on here pregame. A lot of fun. Irish dancers in tight two and one. Sale has not lost a decision since April 27th when he struck out 10 Yankees, but the Red Sox did not score him a run and he lost three to nothing. He has not been defeated since. Right now the Red Sox is season high nine games above 500. Sixteen and seven since the 21st of May. That's the best record in the American League over that span. Popped up foul off third Sandoval ranging but can't get there several rows in. Yeah for a slider right there that's a. Uh Sale has tried against Herrera and just barely getting a piece of it and fouling it off in foul territory into the stands. So far, previous to that pitch, it was all fastballs. There's the slider by Sale and a pretty good job fouling this off by Herrera. Busted bat, fouled away, and Herrera off to get another one. The Oduble doll that is available inside the team stores here at Citizens Bank is a hot seller. I believe you're only entitled to one, even if you want more than one. So look at the strikeouts in the big leagues. Sale on the top over Archer and Darvish. The 2 2. Now we Kendrick on deck, and he is one of the Phillies who has at least seen sale. Got a lot of young players in this lineup who have not. Herrera's given him a pretty good at bat here. Yeah, he's making him throw a lot of pitches, is what you like to do as a leadoff hitter. Back to the slider. Fouls that off. Real good at bat. Put on. Becoming a very tough out for Chris Sale. Herrera 248, five home runs. And looking to run should he get on. 2 2 again. And finally put him away. He struck him out with that slider. Give you a closer look at this starting lineup tonight with Kendrick next. He's had a good season at 340. Altair, Joseph Franco, then Daniel Nava, who has started every game of this four game series against his former team. Freddie Galvis at short. Andrew Knapp doing the catching. Pavetta the pitcher. All against Chris Sale. Kendrick two for 11 lifetime against the left hander. Nice to see Clay Buckholtz before the game and a lot of his Red Sox teammates were gathered around Clay and his family. His growing family. Got another little one. 
Clay showing off his scar as well from his arm surgery as that's cut on and missed. I had a chance to chat with him yesterday about that. He's got a pretty good sized scar on that right elbow, and he said it's about time. He said he hadn't been feeling good for a couple of years and finally got it fixed. And he said for about two and a half years, there was a lot of pain there. Asked him how he enjoys being in Philadelphia. He said, well, it's different. You know, he says, I haven't been able to pitch because of the surgery and all that stuff. He says, but uh, it's not quite the same atmosphere as, as Fenway Park. Two and two. And he's very impressed with a lot of the young players on this team. He says, you know, they're a ways off, obviously, but they're, they're learning at the major league level. Altair on deck, good looking young hitter with some pop. Count is full on Kendrick. Red Sox have won each of their last seven games against the Phillies. It's the longest winning streak. They've had against any National League team. Chopped to Sandoval on a routine play. He guns him down. Two away. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines in the 14th in the league with 47 errors on the season. Pablo Sandoval once again at third base. Xander Bogots the shortstop. Dustin Pedroia at second. And Mitch Marlin back at first base tonight. Andrew Benatendi, Jackie Bradley Jr., Mookie Betts. That's left to right. And Sandy Leone doing the catching for Chris Sale. He was one of the guys they could really build their team around, and they're trying to do that. Aaron Altair, 286, 11 homers, has 36 RBIs. Good looking swing. Leads their team in homers, RBIs, and total bases. But a long way to go here in Philadelphia. Phillies had a lot of good years. Altair with a bit of a smirk on that strike. Down he goes quickly on three pitches. Two strikeouts in the first inning for sale. He's off to the races. Park with the Fenway Gridiron Series presented by Your Call Football. Tickets on sale now. Visit RedSox.com slash gridiron for more information. Vivetta hit 97 on several occasions in the first and they got the Red Sox in order. So Mitch Moreland will lead off the second scoreless after one. And steps in with an eight game hitting streak. That's his longest of the season. Yep, Marlin very quickly back in the lineup tonight. Had to miss last night because of that bad toe, but uh, 
We're moving around much better today. Hanley Ramirez with the night off. That happened a couple of days ago when he got hit on the foot. That back foot. At the time, it didn't look like it would cost him anything really because he hung in there, but it got a little worse. And as a precaution, the Red Sox held him out yesterday, and that's up the middle for a base hit. So nine in a row. He's right back at it. Love to see that. Defeat the shift. The little ground ball to the left side of the infield. Everybody shifted to the right side, and Moreland, uh, as you mentioned, extends the hitting streak to nine games. Now Red Sox get the leadoff man on here in the second. Wide open at shortstop, and that's exactly where the ball goes. If they were in a normal position playing him to pull that probably would be an out. Here's Andrew Benintendi for the first time tonight batting average up to 281 with nine homers leads the ball club with 39 RBIs. You're chatting about his swing. But well, we've been doing it all season long and frankly going back to last year when he was promoted for the first time. But what a beautiful swing he has. Just picture perfect. A lot of results with that lately, too. Is it your thought? Is it your belief that you're born with a swing like that, or are you taught a swing like that? I, I think, I, I don't say you're born with it, but I think you develop it at a very young age, and there is some slight tinkering with it, I think, as you go through your college ranks. But, you know, there are guys uh, that are just born natural hitters, you know, and. And Ben Attenney to me is one of those guys. And we also talked about the difference between spending, you know, four years in the minor leagues and four years in college, which I think probably helped Ben Attendee. Yeah, I think it helps a lot of guys. You see checks. Ben usually in, in college now, you know, college baseball has become so good. When I when I came to the big leagues, that was not the, the really the choice to make. It was if you get a chance to sign, you signed with a a major league ball club, but college baseball is so good now. And you think of, you think about your coaches. You know, you're playing for the same coach probably through your whole career in college. He slices that one down the line. That's going to be a foul ball by just a matter of a couple of feet, maybe. Yeah, I think it's a it's a great point. You're probably going to be with the same coaching staff. You see how close this one was. Yeah, in the minor leagues, you know, every year you have a different manager. Man different coach and so you know everybody has different opinions on you know the way you should either swing the bat or throw the baseball or catch the baseball and you know it's it's, it's, it's not I mean it's all to try to help you but I think nowadays in college you get the four years of, of real stable you know teaching pay off pitch and he walked it that's been an issue for Pavetta Walk 15 men in his last four outings. Runners at first and second. Red Sox trying to build something here in the second inning, and Jackie Bradley will be next. You were talking about, you know, when you broke in, you may have needed instruction. Yes. In other words, when you first started out as a professional, and even at the big league level, they were messing with your swing. Oh, absolutely. My big, my swing in the big leagues changed after three years. You know, the first three years with the Angels, I was hitting a lot of fly balls and. Of course, I didn't have power, and those were turning into just easy outs. And then when I finally got to the Red Sox, I, I learned how to hit the ball more on the line and on the ground and take advantage of the speed that I had. And the average popped from there. So, you know, even in, even at the major league level, you you make adjustments to learn how to best fit your talents. Bradley, 253 with eight home runs. He has been locked in. Six game hitting streak. He's 10 for 23. Last night, two for four with a double. John Farrell hoping to get on a charter for Houston later on tonight. Just a four game winning streak behind him and an opportunity to be one game behind the Yankees by the end of play tonight Did he offer he did it's a swing and a miss and Jackie Bradley down on strikes. 
elevates that fastball up and away from Bradley and he was in between didn't know whether to swing at it or let it go he ends up trying to check the swing but that's not going to happen good call by the third base umpire Reynolds sends up Sandoval at 217 the runners at first and second Pablo one for four last night actually made a couple of really outstanding defensive plays. Which was going around the Red Sox. Yeah, last night by far was the best defensive night they've had all year long. As a club as a unit. Defenses lag for the Red Sox have been right near the bottom in most errors committed right there with Oakland. But last night a superb night. Quickly two strikes on Sandoval. Orland at second and Benintendi at first. Pivet about 6'5, 210 pounds. And that's in there for strike three. Caught him looking at 95 miles an hour. That's pretty nasty pitch right to the outside part of the play to 95. And just catches Sandoval looking at the fastball. So two, two quick base runners and back to back strikeouts for Pavetta. Not much you can do with a pitch like that except hopefully try to foul it off. Maybe off the corner, but Jim Wolf gave it. Close enough to be a strike without question. His brother Randy pitched for the Phillies as Leon gets in. His brother pitched for about six or seven years here, and Jim Wolf was never allowed to umpire any of those series when he was scheduled to umpire one of his brother's games or a Philly series. He had to go someplace else to work, which made complete sense. Sandy at 226 with four homers, 16 runs batted in. He has a little four game hit streak. And a double last night. He does it again. Red Sox may get two runs out of it right here. Talked about Herrera, their center fielder, and how shallow he plays. He really plays in to try and take away that line drive single. Yeah, I think two reasons for that, Dave. One, he does not have a strong throwing arm. Number two, he must have tremendous confidence going back on the baseball. Yeah. That's four straight, and he walks him, and the bases are loaded. Yeah, walks, 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 walks. They've been an issue for Pavetta in his major league start. Red Sox have to take advantage of that, but uh, for sale coming to the plate. So it's Moreland at third, Benintendi at second, and Leon at first, and Chris Sale trying to make contact here. Two for 20 lifetime. Lines that one foul as he got a piece of it. Very aggressive jumping on that first pitch, not waiting to get to two strikes. A little bit late on the fastball, but still very aggressive. Loaded up, and here comes the 1 1. I tell you, take, you take this pitch down from 95 to 85, and he might hit, get himself a base hit. He's a little bit tardy on the 95. At least he's making contact. Yeah, he looks even skinnier when he's hitting, doesn't he? It's one thing when he's on the mound because he's on that hill and he throws 98 miles an hour, but 
in the box. Two and two. Up the middle. Diving stab. Kendrick throws to first. Close, and he got him. Sale is robbed by Kendrick. Hot shot up the middle, and he made an outstanding play to save a run. John Farrell is on the top step. That was a bang bang play over there at first base. Let's see if he is going to choose to challenge it or not. What a play here by Kendrick going into a full dive. That looked like it was going to be a base hit. And then up with a strong throw to first base, and yes, he is out at first base. So no challenge and no score. Brought to you by T-Mobile, active Major League leaders in strikeouts per nine this season. Sale at 10.27. Right by Steven Strasburg, of course, of the Washington Nationals. And just in front of Scherzer and Kershaw. He struck out two in the first inning, but he was just robbed of an RBI single on an outstanding play. By the second baseman Kendrick. I was impressed by two things. First of all, the great play by Kendrick. I mean, he saved two runs, but I was impressed by Sale getting down that first base line. And nipped at the tape. Here's Tommy Joseph, first baseman, 263, 10 homers, 32 RBIs. And pretty serious power. Five for 12 with a couple of RBIs against the Red Sox in this four game series. It'll be followed by Franco and then Daniel Nava. Who we're seeing a lot of starting every game in the series. And Joseph has faced sale twice. He's two for two with a home run against him, and he's currently on a 10 game hitting streak. Sale looking for strikeout number three and gets it right there. One away. Another look at sales at bat. Good solid contact up the middle, and from here it looks like it's going to be base hit. But what a play by Howie Kendrick to come up, make the throw to first, and Sale hustling all the way down the line just gets nipped at first base. And it could have been easily a two nothing ball game right there. Franco at 223 average. He's hit seven home runs. 
He's got six for 13 in the three games against the Red Sox, so he's been a bit of a pest. Sale coming off an 11 3 win over the Detroit Tigers, went seven. He did give up nine hits. That one is a fair ball down the first baseline. Giving Chase Mookie bats right up against the side fence, and it's going to be two bases for Franco on a cue shot just inside the bag or over it. Yeah, just over that first base bag. It was hard to tell here from up here if it was going to be fair or foul, but very quickly, Barrett, the first base umpire, made the fair call, and then he gets down the line. Very defensive swing right there on a fastball inside. Just kind of pushed the ball over that first base bag. Now here's where Betts thought it was going to bounce off the wall and he had to really regroup in a hurry to get back cut it off and get it back in a second base to hold Franco to the double. I thought a fan was about to interfere with it kind of leaning over begged off it at the last second. So one out double for Franco brings up Daniel Nava hitting 321. Danny with three homers. And a man in scoring position now for the Phillies. Red Sox have won the first three games. First two were both walk offs. Last night, seven to three. Fairly routine victory for the Red Sox. In many ways, as you look at Betts again down that line. Yeah, it looked like at first he thought it was going to bounce off the wall right there. And he changes direction quickly to get back on it. You can see the shadows starting to come into play there and able to hold uh, Franco to the double. And the 0 1. That drops in for a strike. Now has reached base safely each of his last 17 starts, hitting almost 300 during that span. One man out. Sale slowing his tempo just a little bit here with a runner on. And he fires it all the way to the backstop. Time was granted to Nava by Jim Wolf. Oftentimes, to avoid injury, a pitcher will just cut it loose like that. Yeah, time being called way too late. I mean, he's already into his delivery, and then time was called. It, it just, it's too late. And Sale did the right thing by just letting it sail to the backstop instead of trying to hold on to the baseball. Umpire's discretion, he does not have to grant that time. Here's the 0 2. And down he goes. 97 with the elevated heat. That took care of that timeout. The fastball up and away from Sale to pick up the strikeout. And we mentioned this, and we mentioned it over and over again that a lot of those strikeouts that he has against right hand has come on that fastball that's up and away. I'll bet you 90 percent of them. Lexus making a pledge to strike out hunger every time a Sox pitcher strikes out a Philly Lexus donates fifty dollars to the Greater Boston Food Bank. And a high pop up off the bat of Galvis. Xander Bogart's in. And so Sale does good work to pitch around the double. He has struck out four of the first seven tonight.
Uh, if you're looking for that perfect Father's Day gift, Hotel Commonwealth is only 500 feet away from the Green Monster. The official hotel of the Red Sox, Hotel Commonwealth, offers exclusive luxury packages with premium tickets and VIP park experiences. You know, they have a Red Sox suite there. Have you ever seen that? No. You should just go and check it out. It's, it's, it's pretty impressive. Autographs from a lot of Red Sox players, current players, past players, Mem Hall of Famers. Memorabilia in there, too? Yep. Huh? Awesome. The Hotel Commonwealth. No score here in the third inning. Mookie Betts batting for the second time. He is grounded to third tonight. Last night is Major League leading fourth four hit game. Also at four for five with three doubles on Monday. Pedroia next and then Xander Bogarts. Fly down the right field line slicing for the corner sailing and that ball is foul. Mookie started out of the box and then he stopped and then started again thinking it might stick. Two home runs last night numbers 10 and 11 for Mookie Betts this one coming early in the ball game that one coming late in the ball game. So Betts now at 11 home runs and 37 runs batted in. Slapped on a line but it hangs up and caught by Nava in a sinking line drive. And Mookie is over two tonight. Another bullet by Betts, but uh, Daniel Nava right there to make the, the catch before it hits the grass. Dustin Pedroia 0 for 1. He's grounded a short. Trying to run his hitting streak to six in a row, and over his last 34 games, he's hitting 331. So interrupted, of course, by the wrist injury, but he's been swinging a good bat for quite a while, actually. And of course just feasts on the National League. Devetto is pitching very well in the minors before they called him up from Triple A Lehigh Valley. He had gone five and oh there with a 141. I guess so his first two wins of the year were against Pawtucket Red Sox. Five to two, six nothing. Called up for the first time in late April for his major league debut. That came against the Dodgers. That was just 10 days after he had struck out 11 at Triple A. So he could be a strikeout guy. He has three so far tonight. Scoreless in the third. Just missed. Bogart's next. Xander with a strikeout in the first inning. Sox trying to win four straight against the Phillies. Pedroia with a cut and a miss. Down he goes, strike three. Let's get out of Garen. Obi Jerry, there was a lot of injury news today, but there was some very good news. Eduardo Rodriguez threw a 33 pitch bullpen. Rodriguez was working on some drills, felt okay, and wanted to throw a full bullpen. John Farrell said that he was ecstatic that he was able to do that. The number of pitches, the intensity of the throws, that they are still targeting Houston for him to start running. He is well ahead of where they thought he would be. And guys, getting much closer, and very good news today. Well, it really is. He's a guy with the season he's having. Red Sox have really missed him. I talked to him in a hotel today on the way over to the ballpark, and he said he's very confident about how that knee feels and how quickly he might be able to get back. Very good news. Line to right field, all tear back and up, though. He'll make that play on top of the warning track, and the Red Sox are done in one, two, three in the third.
27 is Manny Ramirez bobblehead night at Fenway. First 12,000 in attendance receive a Manny bobblehead courtesy of Majestic. For tickets and info, visit RedSox.com slash promos. That's a keeper. Last half of the third, no score. Number eight hitter Andrew Knapp here, then the pitcher Pavetta. And Odubel Herrera against Chris Sale. He has whiffed four men out of the first seven batters he's faced. So now at 131 strikeouts leading the big leagues. That's a swing and a miss for a strike. Yeah, so far early in this ball game, that slider has been really nasty for him. And almost had an RBI base hit. Could well have scored two runs. Probably would have. If not for the diving play by Kendrick with the bases loaded on a sail grounder up the middle. Last Red Sox pitcher to have a hit was Rick Porcello. April of last year and Atlanta he had a base hit and Red Sox pitchers are 0 for 34 since then. Cut on and missed he has struck out nap one man gone. It's something a little different a new wrinkle from sale it's a it's a slider but the slider only at 79 miles an hour he took something off and he really had that fooled on that. That's not fair. I mean normally he throws that slider very hard that time he took something off it. So More it's like curveball velocity. Yeah kind of a change up slider. It's not playing very nice when you throw 98 anyway. Trying to make very quick work of his fellow pitcher. Jumps in front of Pavetta here, 0 and 2. And it was very quick indeed. Strike three as he strikes out back to back hitters here in the third inning. Yeah, quickly got ahead, put him away with the slider. So uh, two strikeouts in the inning. Six in the game, the last two on the slider. Now that time it was 80 miles an hour. Top of the order now, and Adubel Herrera, he struck out to start it for the Phillies. And looking like one of so many Chris Sale outings, where he piles up those strikeouts right away, and it's popped up for Xander Bogarts into shallow left. He gets him in order. One, two, three, go to Phillies.
Live right after the game, TC and Jim will break down tonight's game, and you'll hear from Chris Sale and John Farrell. Whatever, whenever, wherever, who but W.B. Mason. Sale is six strikeouts in the first three innings. We move on to the fourth, and Moreland will lead things off. Red Sox having their own issues with Pavetta. He's been tough early. He's allowed only one hit. He has issued a couple of walks. Moreland has that base hit. To run his hitting streak to nine straight. What that base hit did last time, it took him out of the shift. All of a sudden, they have Freddie Galvis. Uh, they're certainly playing him to pull, but not the complete shift that they normally put on. That's pretty much where the ground ball went in his first at bat. Ben Intendi on deck. And he popped him up. Franco giving chase onto the warning track. And he runs it down for the first out, fourth inning. Nice play by Franco. Had a long way to go because he was certainly playing a Moreland to pull. And then this ball at the last minute goes back on him a little bit. And he's able to make the catch in the webbing of the glove and certainly in front of the stands. One away Ben Attendee now he took ball four in the second inning. The baseball news today the Oakland A's have fired pitching coach Kurt Young. Who briefly served in that capacity with the Red Sox. And a tough season there in Oakland at 27 and 38 17 games behind Houston in last place. You knew someone would have to pay a price. And the Hall of Fame says it is going to uphold the ban, the lifetime ban on Pete Rose. Commissioner Manfred has said that that is not in his power any longer. That's up to the Hall of Fame whether they want to choose to put him on the ballot, and they are upholding his lifetime ban. And I think you and I agree, I think we agree, that he should be on the Hall of Fame ballot. I do. I think he's more than paid his price. I have kind of felt that way the whole time. But apparently nothing's going to change. I do too. And you know the the betting was as a manager as this one is sliced down that left field line. I, I don't know what you do with 4000 hits. And he was yeah. a great ball player. I realize the Hall of Fame has a lot of characters in it. Less than reputable at times in their yes. lifetimes, and that's, uh, for, that's for darn sure. We know that's true, but I've always thought because he committed those transgressions as a manager and, and as a player, clearly one of the great hitters, if not the best. As that one is foul tipped into the mitt, the people have differing opinions. I realize that. And the Hall of Fame has decided that ban will be upheld. Now that's the pitch there right there that gives Ben Attendee some problems. That fastball they keep away from him and a little bit high in the zone. You'll see what location of this fastball is. It's about a little bit above the belt and it's away. And a lot of times he gets trapped into trying to pull that ball. Two down, Jackie Bradley struck out in the second. And he'll take a ball. In eight career games against the Phillies, he's hitting 400. Not a lot of games, but he has hit them. Bases empty, two down, no score. Pavetta has been impressive so far. Three time minor league all star. He drills that one in there for a strike. He pretty much gets it and throws it too. Right now he's waiting on Jackie Bradley. Yeah, he does. Loop toward left on comes Nava, and that'll do it for the Red Sox. Three up, three down for the third time in four innings.
Lexus has developed the Lexus Strikeout Hunger Program in partnership with Nesson and the Greater Boston Food Bank. Visit your Boston area Lexus dealer in June. You can also enter for a chance to win a Nesson VIP ballpark experience. For more information, visit Nesson.com slash Lexus. To the bottom half of the fourth inning, scoreless here in Philadelphia, turning into a pitcher's duel between Chris Sale and the 24-year-old right-hander Nick Pavetta, who came in with an ERA of five and a half, but his pitch much better than that early. The check swing by Kendrick. Kendrick is the guy right now responsible for the nothing nothing game with a diving stab of a Chris Sale hit up the middle took the hit away. Save one perhaps two runs. As there were two out when he made that play. Now the bases were all jammed up for the Red Sox. Aaron Altair on deck, then Tommy Joseph, so it's two, three, and four. And a swing and a miss. Down goes Kendrick Hacking. Uh, let's see if the same pattern continues with Sale. You know, he starts to pile up these strikeouts early in the game, and what the opposition starts to do is try to swing at pitches early in the count, and then sometimes the strikeouts have diminished as the game is going on. He just overpowers with the high fastball right there to Kendrick. Lexus making a pledge to strike out hunger every time a Sox pitcher strikes out a Philly. Lexus donates fifty dollars to the Greater Boston Food Bank. So seven strikeouts for sale. He's allowed one hit a double by Franco in the second inning then he struck out the next guy. Now at 133 leading the American League. Indeed, all of the majors. He's made eight starts where he has struck out 10 or more. Two one and a fly ball off the end of the bat to Benintendi. And there are two gone. It's actually been a little while since Chris Sale last struck out at least 10. You have to go back to May 19th at Oakland. Did that over seven innings. His next four starts, six, nine, nine, and seven. And already at seven tonight. Tommy Joseph, one of them. A floater here into center field, and Jackie Bradley has to play it on a hop. It drops in. For a two out single. That's exactly what we were talking about. You know, Joseph, who struck out on a, a slider in his first at bat, jumps on the first fastball he sees and just drops it right in front of Jackie Bradley for the base hit. And that's the approach I would be taking. I would not be waiting around for two strikes against Chris Sale. Well, now the man who has the only other hit for them so far tonight, Michael Franco, that double over first base in the second inning. And Sale as he went over to cover first base for a potential play, as he went right over the bag. That double, he had a, a look of absolute disgust on his face. That he had given up a hit. Now he's allowed two. And the 0 1. That's the changeup right there. And again, full perfect location down and away from Franco. Now Franco has been the one Philly who has really shined in this four game series. He's 7 for 14. But Sale trying to put him away here in the fourth inning. Joseph, no threat to run there at first base. 
two down. Off the end of the bat, foul right over the head of a ducking Daniel Nava. MLB.com at bat is your number one app for live Red Sox baseball. Stay connected. Get Red Sox home screen icons, app features, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. Sale eyeing his eighth K. Just got a piece of it. That's a good pitch to change up away and a good job fouling that off by Franco. I mean, that's exactly where he wanted to go with that change up down outside part of the plate low. You can see Leon giving that fake where he's going to come inside, tapping the glove to make the hitter think that and goes away. Franco able to foul it off. Red Sox heading for Houston tonight in the three game series against the Astros through Sunday. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Strike three. Two more K's in the inning. Eight tonight for sale. Pablo Sandoval leading off the fifth inning scoreless game in Philadelphia. A getaway night for the Sox. Sandoval then Sandy Leone and Chris Sale. Do up against Nick Pavetta. And he's been very tough. He's allowed just one hit. I like the way he's been aggressive. He attacks it is very similar to the way Sale does. Different different stuff obviously but. He doesn't waste any time. Pitches like he has confidence in his stuff. Native Canadian, 24 years old. Sandoval struck out looking in the second inning. For every RBI hit by a Franklin family batting glove member this season, Franklin Sports donates to the Red Sox Foundation's RBI program. Franklin Sports is a proud partner of the Red Sox Foundation and Major League Baseball. And a 2 2 to Pablo. The right hander walked a couple of men in the second inning to load the bases. But he got out of that thanks to some outstanding defense. Not an easy thing to walk Pablo Sandoval. 
Stay tuned after the third out of this half inning for the Mid Fifth Studio Show presented by GMC. Hard hit, but down to scoop at Franco. One away in the Red Sox fifth inning. That'll send up Sandy Leon, who took ball four in the second inning to load him up. Red Sox will give the baseball to Drew Pomeranz tomorrow night at 810. Rick Porcello on Saturday and David Price on Sunday night. Red Sox again appearing on Sunday night baseball. And then we'll fly to Kansas City for three games against the Royals right after that. We'll do that without a day off on Monday. And you will be staying in Houston to do radio on that Sunday night game, the game that's going to be nationally televised, but uh, you'll be with Tim Neverett calling the game on WEI. That's correct. Back on radio for one night only. It's all that allow. Looking forward to that. Joe Castiglione has the night off. We'll fill in for Joe on radio, the 1 1 pitch. One and two. No producer on radio, Jerry. You just do and say whatever you want. Yeah. Jeff Mitchell has a ground ball base hit into left field. So Sandy Leon is on for the second time, and the Red Sox have their second hit. That's something you don't see very often. Sandy Leon using the opposite field to pick up a base hit line shot that's going to go right by Gonzalez. Uh, Galvin's the shortstop, excuse me. Gets on top of a high fastball and puts it on a line. That's that's a nice piece of hitting there by Sandy Leon. So Sandy with a five game hitting streak. Grissel turning to bunt. And it gets right by everybody all the way to the backstop. That'll advance the runner without Sale even having to drop one down. Yeah, I just overthrew that fastball, not even close to being anywhere near the strike zone. And Sale had to dance to get out of the way of that pitch. Coming into this game, Sale had one career sacrifice bunt. That was back in 2012. Very nearly a run scoring hit in his first at bat. And Pavetta with a 1 0. Jabs at it and he fouls it away. Seeing a lot of jabbing and doing bunting, aren't we? Stay tuned for Red Sox final presented by Plain Ridge Park Casino. TC and Jim will recap tonight's congressional baseball game and preview the Red Sox next series. Against the Astros. Very proud to play that game. That one is filed back to the screen. So swinging the bat on that occasion. Yeah, dropping down bunts has not been a, a high point for the Red Sox on this trip. Had a couple opportunities last night. The pitching staff had uh, two different chances but couldn't do it. Roller foul. I'll tell you, Sale doesn't look too bad up there. I mean, he's making contact. He's fouling some balls off. He almost had himself a base hit. I mean, this is not Ted Williams by any means, but I mean, it's it's contact. He's got the the splinter part of the splinter splinter right. Yeah. You know. <laughs> At six six, about 178 pounds. And a cut and a miss for strike three. So the Red Sox with two down and Leon at second. And now Mookie Betts. That's the game changer right there when they start throwing the wrinkle at the pitchers. And that changes things. The odds go deeply against the pitcher in those situations. Or I should say the hitter. Mookie tonight with a ground out to third and a liner to left coming off four hits and two homers last night and a double.
Oki as of late racking up the doubles leads the majors tied for the major league lead with 23 doubles. He has 65 doubles since the start of 2016. That's the most in the majors. Trying to pick up Sandy Leone here. And a base hit into left. Charged by Nava. Butterfield's going to wave in Leone. Here's the throw to the plate. One hop to tag, and he is out at home. For out number three. So the Red Sox with a chance to score, but Sandy Leone out at the dish. And it's still nothing, nothing. His old friend Daniel Nava throws a strike to the plate. Time now to turn it over to Emerson and Nicky for the Midfist Studio Show presented by GMC. This Red Sox just had a man cut down at home plate. And here's a look at that Chuck to get Leon from left field. Well, you know, with two outs, you've got to take this chance. You hope for a bad throw. You know, if it's one out, you hold him at third base. With two outs, you take the gamble, especially when you expect it to be a low scoring game. And Leon tagged out. Are the Red Sox looking at this, or are they going to look at this? Uh, he's out. Yeah, umpires were kind of hover, hovering around the Red Sox dugout, but uh, there's no question that Sandy Leone was way out at home plate. You know, after the out at the plate, I guess somebody pulled the fire alarm. The fire alarm has been activated inside the ballpark. Oh, that's good. That's pleasant to listen to. Just hope for not very much longer. Meanwhile, nothing, nothing at the midway point. It'll be Nava, Galvis, and Knapp against Chris Sale, who struck out eight. And he has allowed two hits, a single and a double. This can't be easy to concentrate. Now, this isn't tennis. I mean, you can play through this. So <laughs> not golf. Comes Jim Reynolds down to third baseline. Play ball. I think you can expect several hundred nasty emails from tennis fans waiting in your box. No, I, I, I love I love both sports, but you know it is a quiet sport, right? Very much, very solemn. Nava struck out in the second inning. Each side with just two hits. That really is lovely, isn't it? You know what it sounds like to me? Sounds like your hotel room in New York City, right? I mean, it never <laughs> stops oh, in New it. York, right? Sirens all night long. Yep. Constant. And 
the looper foul by Nava. Freddie Galvis on deck. Sale with a possibility of a ninth K right here. Trying to get Nava for the second time. And puts him away at 96. Nine strikeouts. Tonight after Red Sox coverage on Nesson Sports today, we'll save you time with all the latest news, including a celebration of the anniversary of the Bruins Stanley Cup victory in 2011. Nesson Sports today is presented by People's United Bank. See what know-how can do. I think somebody found the switch. They did. Yeah. Off. Finally over. As Galvis gets in, he's 0 for 1 with a pop to short. I kind of preferred it to kind of add it to the <laughs> ambiance of the ballpark. You're alone. And Sachs looking for a four game sweep of the Phillies. Popped up here by Freddie Galvis. Bogarts has been busy on these tonight on the dirt for the second out. And that'll send up Andrew Knapp, the catcher, who's already struck out once tonight. Red Sox come to sixth inning. We'll have due up Pedroia, Bogarts, and Moreland. Chris Hill going for eight consecutive wins. And that one bit Santa Leon, that foul tip. Knapp struck out, became the fifth strikeout victim for sale in his last at bat in the third inning. Umpire just checking to make sure that uh, Leon is okay. Sweeps off the plate. It didn't really need it, but that's giving him a little extra time behind home plate, and he's ready to go. Sock foul quickly 0 and 2 here on Nap. So one more strike, and Sale will have 10. Strikeouts through five innings. And it'll be the first time he has gotten to 10 since the 19th of May. And right back to him. So no strikeout, but another fast inning as he lobs on to retire nap. As the Phillies go in order, still no score here.
to help youth baseball and softball programs from June 23rd through June 25th by donating new or used equipment at Fenway Park. Scoreless on to the sixth inning. Jerry Remy, Dave O'Brien with you. Garen Austin as well, and the Red Sox will bring up Pedroia, Bogarts, and Moreland against Pavetta. Dustin tonight has grounded out and struck out. Red Sox three hits. The Phillies have two. I'll tell you, Pavetta's impressed me tonight. You know, he he's kind of a take charge pitcher. He doesn't waste any time. Trust his stuff. Acquired from the Nationals in the Papelbon trade. Well struck right field, backing up Baltieri as room though. One away for the Red Sox in the sixth inning. Ace Ticket is Boston's trusted source for Red Sox tickets. From bleachers to boxes, Ace Ticket has the lowest prices to all games at Fenway with a 200% guarantee. Treat yourself for someone special with tickets to a game. Visit aceticket.com now or call 1 800 My Seats. Xander Bogarts has struck out and lined to right field. 330 down the right field line here, 334 into the corner in left, but 329 to the foul pole. And 401 to straight center at Citizens Bank. Crowds have been pretty good here. They had over 28,000 last night. Yeah, surprisingly so. You know, I didn't expect them to draw that well the way the Phillies have been playing. Last foul. Philadelphia, the worst record in the majors, 21 and 43. No denying the Red Sox impact in the stands. Many, many Red Sox fans here. Swing and a miss. Down goes Xander as he fans. And Pavetta continues to throw it very well. Yeah, he certainly does. And you know, you can see him as, as the game has gone on, gain confidence. More confidence. <laughs> Two fast outs in the sixth inning. Moreland the hitter. He singled and popped up one for two. That's the base hit against the shift that was going uh, toward the shortstop area. That's his hit back in the second inning. They got that call rather generously from Jim Wolf. But he does have seven strikeouts. Pitched out of a bases loaded jam got an exceptional defensive play from a second baseman in the second inning. Otherwise the Red Sox would have taken a one or two nothing lead at the time. They've had a three times named a minor league all star in the South Atlantic League the Carolina and the Eastern League. So his credentials below the big league line have been impressive. The sixth inning is pretty much rarefied air for him. He is rarely gone. Very deep in a game, a wave and a miss. Down goes Moreland. Red Sox. One, two, three, once again at the hand of Nick Pavetta.
Sox and the rest of America run on Duncan. Duncan's iced coffee is consistently smooth and delicious. Duncan Donuts Coffee, the number one coffee in New England. The Boston Red Sox run on Duncan. Scoreless game to the last half of the sixth inning. And the pitcher Pavetta, who struck out in the third inning, will lead things off here, and he broke his bat. They have to borrow one here. They'll be followed by Herrera and then Kendrick. Nine K's in the book for sale, but his opponent has eight. And they have pretty much matched each other here tonight. That's a strike. Red Sox three hits. Phillies have been held to two by sale. Trying for his ninth start of 10 strikeouts, and that one just missed. That could have been a called strike. Did not get the call. He's run it full now on Pavetta. He hasn't walked anybody in this one. He's only walked four batters in his last five starts. Right back to sale. And he lobs on to get him one away in the sixth inning. Time for a game break brought to you by Jordan's the furniture store of the Boston Red Sox. Here's Tom Karen. Tom, thank you. Herrera will be next. He struck out and popped up 0 for 2. Citizens Bank Park. Really fine, fine park here. We highly recommend it. Easy place to see a game, especially when the weather's like this. Oh, this is, uh, this is, if every night could be like this for baseball, it'd be just absolutely perfect. You're here. Just gorgeous. And not a hint of rain. A slicing liner, but Benintendi will make the catch. Two down. That ball left the bat. I thought maybe it had a chance to drop in in front of Benintendi, but it kept carrying and slicing away. And Benintendi did make the play look very easy. Sends up Howie Kendrick, who is grounded out and struck out. Done his best work with the glove tonight to save a run or two. The diving play to Rob Sale of a base hit with the bases loaded. He's two for 13 lifetime against the Red Sox lefty. All tear on deck. And a two nothing. Sox and the Houston Astros coming up over the weekend. Astros have been a great story in baseball this season, but they have a lot of pitching injuries. It's going to be ball four to Kendrick. He's on with two down. Get expert emergency care without leaving the ballpark at Fenway. The Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, the first aid station located behind Section 12. Beth Israel Deaconess. Visit BIDMC.org. I love the reaction by Sale after he walked somebody. He, he does not like to walk people, and he was very emotional after ball four. Takes it personally. Yeah. He didn't walk anybody his last start against the Tigers. Here's Altair. He's gone 0 for 2. And one of the hitters in their lineup you really have to be careful with. Makes pretty good contact, has some power. Nothing, nothing game in the sixth.
Hendricks seven steals on the season he's been caught three times. Really had his running shoes on back at Fenway. At the beginning of this four game series. He had one game he stole three bases. Which is a career high for him. Chopper foul. So Sale jumping out in front of Altair. It's a typical pattern where you see the, the strikeout pace begin to slow a little bit at this point in the game. After piling up a lot of them early. A little more contact here by the Phillies. Great big hole on the right side as Moreland holds the runner Kendrick. Sox in the seventh have Ben and Tendy Bradley Sandoval do up against Nick Pavetta. Fly ball right center field. Jackie Bradley right there to retire the side. No runs or hits, a walk, one left. Still nothing, nothing in Philly. Steelers and he has been matching Chris Sale tonight. Six shutout innings, only three hits, striking out eight and walking just two men. Very, very impressive performance. He knows who he's up against and he's matching him in this ball game. So it's been a good one on to the seventh inning. Ben Intendi will lead things off, then Bradley and Sandoval. Their third look at the righty. See if that makes a difference. Andrew tonight with a walk and a strikeout. He was one for three with an RBI last night. He does have a five game hitting streak. A change up that time. Not too many of them tonight in this game, but enough to throw and keep the Red Sox off balance. Again, Pavetta came in one and three, ERA of 5.52. Made his major league debut in the first month. His fastball velocity has been sitting between 94 and 97. Yeah, he's been very consistent with it all night long. 96 on that last fastball up and in on Ben Attendi. And foul tip to the mitt. He struck him out. 
That's his third in a row and number nine for Pavetta. Yeah, you look at the last two strikeouts for Ben Attendi. Both pitches have been away from him. That last fastball down and away from uh, from Ben Attendi. So he has as many strikeouts as Chris Sale does tonight. With one out in the seventh inning is Jackie Bradley. Lined in the center field and for a base hit. Just the fourth Red Sox hit. This one comes in the seventh with one away. Well, let's get on to Garen. Day for Austin Maddox, his first major league call up. He told me it's a dream come true and something he's been waiting his whole life for. He said as soon as he got the call, he immediately called his mom. Maddox said that he feels like he's been pitching really well and he's focusing on one day at a time. And John Farrell said that Maddox really impressed during spring training and he's continued to impress at each level. And Maddox also said that. It's been really helpful that he already has relationships with everyone on this team. They've made him feel comfortable and helped him get situated. And guys, I talked to his family earlier, and they said that they have not slept since they called them. So clearly a very exciting day for their whole family. Well, you can't beat it. One of the great days in any family history. And Sandoval foul tips that one to the mid. Austin, 26 years old now, just turned 26 in May from Jacksonville, Florida. A big star at the University of Florida, where he was an All-American. I'm trying to think ahead a little bit here and you know the possibility of a hit and run does exist with this combination because Sandoval you know it, it doesn't matter where the pitch is he can swing and make contact on it so it is a possibility with this combination and one out in the inning Sandoval is struck out looking and grounded to third nothing nothing. Once again, he pulled the string, and we haven't seen that many of those change-ups, but they've been good when he's thrown them. Yeah, that one was a little bit elevated. That was actually a pretty good pitch to hit, but the, the off-speed of the pitch is what fools Sandoval. You see the location, it stays up in the zone, and that's actually a pretty good pitch to hit, but oh, yeah. because it was off-speed, it fooled him. So, so when two eliminates a hit and run, that's for sure. The only thing left now is a possible steal. And Pavetta seems concerned about that from Jackie Bradley, who has two of them. Not running. Leon on deck. It's not said very often in this ballpark because it really does play like a bandbox, particularly as it gets warmer like this, but. One run might be enough tonight for either team. The way these two are pitching. High fly ball into right center field. It's Herrera on the move to the gap. And they're two down. Tomorrow at 7, don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Joseph Abood. Available at Men's Warehouse. We'll have part two of a one-on-one -on -one interview with Robbie Scott. I think I think Bradley's going to try to steal a base here because, well, if he does, they're probably going to walk Leon and, and face Sale. But, you know, you, you're down at the bottom of the lineup and, you know, maybe we can catch the Phillies napping if the successful steal and pitch to Leon. I mean, it's worth a shot. Now the Red Sox are not doing anything else. At this point, he's not running, holding on the first one for ball one. Pavetta, I will give them this credit. He he does not take a long time to deliver the ball to home plate. He gets there pretty quickly. He did see Ruben Amaro lean in and say something to Jackie Bradley. Ruben, the former general manager of the Philadelphia Phillies. Stays put, and that's a strike. Sandy with a walk and a base hit. And he has also been thrown out at home plate by Nava. No activity in either bullpen.
And Pat Nishek now beginning to move around. As the pitch count is starting to rise here for, for Pavetta. And he's generally stayed away from his number one issue, which has been ball four. He got a little while in the second inning when he walked Benintendi and Leon loading the bases, but he got out of that because of Howie Kendrick and a standout play. That's why there's still nothing, nothing. Pavetta's made six major league starts with a fastball averaging 94 miles an hour. He's lived up to that tonight. A 1 2. High fly ball, but foul. Down the right field line. Tried to pull Sandy Leon with a slider that time and had Leon out in front on the off speed pitch. Well, you got to respect that fastball. He throws the uh, breaking ball right here, and actually a pretty good pitch to hit. But again, being a little bit off speed, had Leon on in his front foot. Not much left. Sail on deck. Line shot, but caught by Franco to retire the side. Red Sox get a base runner, but cannot advance him. In the middle of the seventh, we are scoreless in Philadelphia. So this one's a dog fight. And of course two of the games went extra innings and the Red Sox needed walk off hits in the 11th and the 12th innings to win those. Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you by McDonald's any McCafe bakery muffin with any size hot or iced coffee just a dollar ninety nine. Four trucks built for tough the official truck of the Boston Red Sox. Franklin Sports the official batting glove of Major League Baseball. And by Subaru of New England, supplying all wheel drive vehicles with a passion for summer travels. So, Sale pitching into his seventh inning. Nothing new there. He'll get Joseph Franco and Nava. That's four, five, and six, all for the third time in the bottom of the seventh in a scoreless game. Joseph is struck out and single. Sale with nine strikeouts. His opponent Pavetta has struck out nine. And a fly ball routinely hit to Jackie Bradley. One gone. And Franco will be next. 
the few guys tonight to make decent contact against Chris. He has doubled and struck out. And that play that Franco made to end last inning on the line shot by Leon. If that ball gets by him and runs down into the corner, the Red Sox have a run. He made a very good play and he saved the run. Backhanded stab. Goes after the first pitch, which you see so often later in games with Sale. Sale with nine strikeouts. He's gotten Pavetta as well in a strikeout that we clocked at 33 seconds. Three pitches. I don't know if he's had any faster than that this season, but that's about as quick as it gets. And still working at a breakneck pace here to the seventh. Nothing, nothing. Sox with four hits, Phillies with just two. The 2 2. That's barely fouling off that changeup that time. Was Franco? He's done that frequently in this series. Just trying to make contact and stay alive for a better pitch. One down, base is clean. Pedroia there on the second bounce. Two down. Fans, be sure to stop by Plain Ridge Park Casino. Plain Ridge Park Casino, 45 minutes from Boston. That'll send up Daniel Nava. He's had difficulty making contact tonight. He has struck out twice. He also made a pretty strong throw to the plate to nail Sandy Leone, who was running with two down on a base hit to left field. So you have to credit the Phillies for making good defensive plays to keep this nothing nothing. Yeah, we kind of talked about it when we introduced the defense. You know, they're, they're fourth in the league in defense in the National League. That's really the the strength of their ball club. It's not the pitching. It's not the hitting. It's it's been their defense. Two strikes on Nava. Sales pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket. The one walk, which made him really angry. Nine strikeouts, six and two thirds, just two hits. In pretty good shape with that pitch count at 90. Trying to fan Nava for the third time. Typical for sale to throw about 110 pitches. The season high is 115, which he did over eight innings in beating the Orioles on a three hitter. And that's the game that started his winning streak of seven straight. That's on the line here tonight. This would be his 10th strikeout. Still that velocity and that fastball at 96 miles an hour here into the seventh inning. Oh, and two on Nava with two down. And he got him. He strikes him out for the third time. 10 K's for sale and still a nothing nothing game going to the eighth.
Here's our cricket something to smile about moment. Chris Sale with his 10th strikeout, putting away Daniel Navon strikes for the third time tonight. You know, Sandy Leone can set up inside on those fastballs all he wants against right handers, but they're going to be away. Yeah. It's just amazing. <laughs> and probably for a swing and a miss. Well, the night is over for, for Pavetta, who is really, really good as he went seven. Lines just four hits, nine strikeouts. He walked only two men. Sale will hit for himself. He's at 93 pitches. And a line drive to left field, racing back. Nava still back, back. It's over his head. Out of the warning track. Sale into second base. He slides in with a double. How do you like that? Chris Sale with a two base hit in the eighth inning. <laughs> over the head of Daniel Nava. Earlier tonight, he was denied a run scoring single. Yep, he certainly was. It could have been two runs, and he was robbed by Howie Kendrick. I'll tell you one thing watching him tonight, he's not afraid to swing the bat. He's not up there to strike out. If he strikes out, it's going to be swinging the bat. Second pitch, ball away. Perfect swing going away. Up over the head of Nava. And then I'm watching him run. He's got good speed as he makes his way into second base. He turned it on. He knows he's got one here. Long strides at 6-6. Six, six. And a good slide. Showing off some fundamentals. First hit by a Sox pitcher in a long time since April of 2016. And Mookie Betts now. One for three. No score in the eighth inning, but Chris Sale has just ripped a double to lead things off. Okay, with a single back in the fifth. Hit the ball hard a couple of times. And he fouls it off the catcher nap. So Sale batting for himself to start the inning against Nishek, who can be a really nasty reliever. Doubles over the head of Daniel Nava. And the Red Sox have a man in scoring position with nobody out. And fly foul out of play. Stay right here after the third out for a special behind the scenes look at what happens in between innings. Red Sox trying to turn that into a run here and get on the board finally. Check swing foul away. If you were not with us back in the second inning, Chris Sale came to bat with two down and the bases loaded and two for 20 in his career as a hitter. And he hit a hard ground ball up the middle that Kendrick, the second baseman, had to dive into the center field grass to grab and then gunned him down on a close play at first. Liner to right field, racing back all tear. He's going to make the catch. Sale's going to tag. Here's the throw, and it's cut off, and he's into third base. <laughs> And he shows some good base running. So he is at third base with one down. I mean, he knew exactly what he was supposed to do there. Fly ball to the opposite field, go back, tag up, and get to third base now with less than two outs. He had, there was no hesitation at all. Contact right back to the bag. They know it's going to be a catch. Tag up, get the third base. Tell you what, you can pick him up and put him down. Yeah. We don't get to see it. Yeah. Getting to see it tonight. Now he's 90 feet away, the infield coming in. Dustin Pedroia, the batter. 0 for 3 tonight. One down, a go ahead run at third. And strike one. Pedroia is grounded, short, struck out, and flied out to right field.
Red Sox with a man at third base for the first time in quite a while and a swing and a miss to count 0 2. Bogarts on deck. Nishak can be very deceptive. Although Sale hit him. Two strikes on Dustin Pedroia. And kind of a missed strike three. So two down. All right, went to the uh, slider that time. They wanted to go to the slider away from Pedroia. They left it right down the middle. And surprisingly, Pedroia did not make contact on it. Watch the location of this pitch. It was supposed to be away. It just kind of spins to the middle of the plate. And no contact by Dustin. So it's up to Xander Bogarts, who struck out twice and lined to right. 0 for 3. Two down sales still at third base. No score. Here in the top of the eighth inning. Bogarts two for five with a double last night drove in three runs has a chance right now to pick up his 27th RBI check swing and he went Lance Barrett said a swing and a miss and it's one and one and that's where Nishak gets you you know he's got that herky jerky delivery and he, he drops those sliders on you consistently as a right handed hitter. There's another one going to the outside part of the plate, maybe off the plate. The Bogarts can't stay off it. And a pop up. Joseph at first base behind the bag. And a Red Sox waste a golden chance. Chris Sale with a double advances to third, but he is stranded there. Still a nothing nothing game. Don't go anywhere as we stay in the park. Tomorrow, the Red Sox take on the best team in baseball, the Astros. So this ought to be entertaining. Power against power. Houston is off to their best start in franchise history. An 11-run inning. But the Sox are surging in the East. Here comes the throw. He dives. He's safe. And the Red Sox win it. Making this the hottest ticket in baseball. Red Sox Astros. Coverage of the series opener begins tomorrow at 7 on Nesson. So why do your low fares come with two free bags, unlike the other guys? Cause I know I can treat you better. And why do your low fares stay so low? Cause I know I can treat you better. Why am I wasting time with that other airline? <laughs> when you should be with me instead. Yes. Hmm? What? <laughs> Southwest. Hey, Boston, say yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Hey, let's play Dare to Compare and see what $11.99 buys at my Bob's and what it buys at their store. Where's the bed? That's $20.97. How about the mirror and nightstand? That's a whopping $25.15. Now make your move, Bob. My Chatham bedroom with underbed storage is only $11.99 complete. So would you rather pay $11.99 for this or for this? Game over. Dare to Compare at Bob's Discount Furniture, in store or at mybobs.com. Well, back in Philadelphia, where it's still a nothing nothing game. Jerry Remy, Dave O'Brien, Garrett Austin from Citizens Bank. Chris Sale just did a lot of running out there as he rips a double and then tags up and goes second to third, but nobody drove him in, so we remain scoreless. What a ball game here tonight. A time for the carrying the freight moment brought to you by Old Dominion. Well, Chris Sale going to the opposite field on a fastball away from Nishak up over the head of Nobber and legs it into a double. That looked very promising. 
at that time for the Red Sox, but they were not able to score. Old Dominion, the official freight carry of Major League Baseball and the Boston Red Sox. So he'll get the bottom third of their order, seven, eight, and nine. Chris Sale with 10 strikeouts, 93 pitches as he begins the eighth inning. He's gotten Galvis twice on a pair of pop ups to short. And a high fly, pretty well hit, but it hangs up for Jackie Bradley. One man gone in the eighth inning. Tomorrow at 7.30, don't miss Red Sox Game Day Live presented by DCU. Adam and Jim will preview the Red Sox next series against the Astros and preview Drew Pomerantz's thought tomorrow night. DCU Digital Federal Credit Union, what can DCU save you? Sale at the moment tossing a two-hit shutout. That he needed someone to drive him in. Andrew Nat now he has struck out and grounded to the pitcher 0 for 2. Nobody throwing in the Red Sox pen. Phillies have already gone to the bullpen. They got an outstanding start tonight from Nick Pavetta. As he went seven struck out nine and allowed only four hits. Slapped and a base hit into left field out of the range of Bogarts. So Knapp is out with a one out hit. Now they'll bring up Ty Kelly as he'll hit in a pitcher spot. So Kelly announced just a 207 hitter. Dubal Herrera coming to the on deck circle. And that's just the third hit tonight against Sale. Indicating a bunt, but he'll take a ball. Now the question is, you know, will they try to do something against Sale? Will they try to bunt against him? Will they try to hit and run? And, you know, it's always tough to hit and run against a guy that's a strikeout pitcher. It's late in the ball game, and you can expect anything. A 2 1. Foul tip to the mid. Kelly played for Israel in the 2017 World Baseball Classic. Claimed off waivers from Toronto on April 10th, picked up by the Phillies. Sale trying to make him number 11. And that just missed. So the count. Goes to two balls and one strike on Kelly. Line drive down into the corner. That'll keep on rolling. Nap heading into third. They're going to wave him in. The throw. Not going to get him. And the Phillies have taken a one to nothing lead. Now that is one of the few sliders that hung in, up in the zone for sale all night long. Watch the location of that breaking ball. It stays up over the plate. And those pitches have been down around the angles all night. Kelly right down the line. There was no question that they were going to try to score a nap all the way from first base. He's checking it out. Third base coach waves him on and incredibly a 1 0 Phillies lead. The relay going over everybody's head. Sandoval throws it over the catcher's head, but Sales backing the playoff. I thought had Ben Intendi's throw been right to Bogarts. They might have had a chance. May have had a chance at a play at the plate. Far better than what happened. In any event, 1 0 Phillies. As Kelly comes through off the bench, he's down to second, and Herrera the batter with one down and a huge run in. 
And that'll be in there for a strike. Phillies with only four hits in a ball game, but two of them have come here in the eighth. And an 0-1 pitch to Herrera. Lane Boyer, the man throwing suddenly in the Red Sox pen. 104 pitches for Chris Sale. <laughs> Phillies in front, one to nothing. And the two strike pitch. Herrera on the night, 0 for 3 with a strikeout, a pop up, and a liner to left. Almost got his third base coach. The Phillies had not had more than one man on base all night in an inning until this eighth inning. Two strikes on Herrera. Dolphed into right. That's coming on to make the catch. He'll fire back into second. No double play. But there are two gone. Stay on top of the latest Red Sox news with Nesson's free text alerts. From breaking news to in game alerts, Nesson will make sure you're in the know to sign up. Text Red Sox to 536-536. Message and data rates may apply. Red Sox will send up Moreland, Benintendi, and Bradley in the ninth inning. Here's Kendrick. Kendrick has gone 0 for 2 with a walk. They've got their closer Naris warmed up in the bullpen. He has allowed four home runs in 27 innings. Two strikes on Kendrick. Now they're here at the moment right now is certainly Ty Kelly with that RBI double to drive in Nap. I'll tell you another hero is the guy at the plate right now on a defensive play early in the game against Chris Sale. Yes. Diving stab with the bases loaded. And threw him out at first base. Red Sox unfortunately tonight at least to this point have gone back to their habit of not scoring for Sale. Yep. Just had, in case uh, early. had a golden opportunity with a man to throw with him at third base. Here comes pitch number 110. Fly to right field. Betts charging toward the line on the move, reaching, and he made the play. He caught it into foul territory. And that retires the side. However, the Red Sox are now down one to nothing as we go to the ninth in Philly.
fast. Yes, to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Toyota's website for deals, buyatoyota.com. Digital Federal Credit Union. See what DCU can save you. And by Infinity, empower the drive. Red Sox trail 1-0 as we go to the ninth inning. Hector Neris out of their bullpen against Moreland, Benintendi, and Jackie Bradley. Chris Sale tremendous again and with the bat too. And yet right now on the verge of losing to the Philadelphia Phillies. Moreland's gone one for three with a single. A split fingered fastball that time. Naris has been a lot better as a setup man as ERA when he pitches the eighth is under one when he pitches in the ninth it's almost six. Back to back split is one down and in one away. Mitch with a nine game hitting streak now he extended that in the second with a base hit. And he rolls over on that one to the first baseline, charging in Joseph right to the base for the out on a fair ball, so one away. Our game summary brought to you by Xfinity. A couple of strikeouts by Sale, another big night for him, uh, strikeout wise, as we look at the game summary by Xfinity. Tip of the cap to Pavetta, their starter, Dick Pavetta, he was outstanding. Seven innings, nine strikeouts, no decision. Here's Benintendi, he's gone 0 for 2 on the walk tonight. Well, it looked very promising when Sale provided one of the true highlights. Here in the month of June with his double to lead off the eighth inning in a nothing nothing game. He would advance to third on a fly out with one out he was there but then Pedroia struck out and Bogarts popped up. That was the end of that. For every Red Sox homer this season Speedway donates five hundred dollars to Boston Children's Hospital now through the end of July. Use your speedy rewards card when you make a purchase of any size fountain or frozen drink. For 69 cents, and you get an entry code to win a VIP experience. Well, that's that split thing at fastball again. That's been really good for him here in the ninth inning. If he hangs one of those, it could be really good for the Red Sox. Instead of swinging a miss, strike three, and just like that, two down. Here comes Jackie Bradley, who's gone one for three with a single. Ninety six, but outside for ball one. Heath Embry. Loosening in the bullpen, hoping to work in this one. Sale was terrific once again. Dropped his ERA to about 2-7 before that run that he allowed. And in there for a called strike. Two and one on Jackie Bradley. Likes to go to that split at Udby. Two balls, no strikes. Goes to the split fingered fastball and picks up the bottom of the strike zone. Roll foul, two and two. Well, this is a sight we have not seen in this four game series. Philly fans on their feet in the ninth inning. The 2 2. Just got a piece of it and he fouled it away. 
But Jackie's still alive, but barely. Three and two. Sand the ball on deck. Walk would put the tying run aboard here in the ninth inning. And a payoff pitch. He fouled it away again. He went back to that split. Yeah, he's, uh, you know. Eight out of ten pitches have been split thinking fastballs. And this one, Bradley just barely falling off. Harris with another 3 2. And up high, he walked it. So the Sox have a base runner. They still have a pulse here with two down in the ninth. Pablo Sandoval marching up. Pablo has gone 0 for 3 tonight. He has struck out, grounded to third, and fly to center. Last pitch, a split uh, thinking fastball again, but really not even close. Up high out of the strike zone. That's not where he wants it. Still a life. And a cut and a miss strike one on Sandoval. Red Sox are a team that does not strike out very much, but they have fanned 11 times tonight. Nothing in two. That's the problem right there. You don't have to throw Sandoval strikes. You know, on those split finger fastballs, they end up way, way out of the strike zone, and he still chases it. Not close on that one. Jackie Bradley at first with two down, two strikes on Sandoval. Very high career success rate for Jackie. He's only been caught three times. Cut on and missed strike three, and that does it. The Red Sox lose one to nothing tonight here in Philadelphia, despite an outstanding pitching performance from Chris Sale, who struck out ten over eight innings. And even with the bat in his hands, he was dangerous tonight. But the Phillies eke out a victory. Ty Kelly with that pinch hit double to drive it a run in the eighth inning. And that's all anybody needed tonight. Phillies win this one one to nothing. Red Sox taking three out of four. And we'll have more from Philadelphia in just a moment.